Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today we are talking about the Polaroid SX70. This is one of my all-time favorite film cameras. It's definitely my favorite Polaroid camera, and anytime I talk about this camera here on the channel or if I'm sharing photos on Instagram, I always get comments from people saying, I can't get results like this with my SX70, or my SX70 photos never turn out this good. First of all, you're only seeing the photos I choose to share, so you're not seeing all the bad photos, but I'm here to tell you you can definitely get good photos out of the SX70, so today I'm going to give you guys three tips that I think will help you do just that. It's one of my favorite cameras for a number of different reasons. It's super compact when you fold it up. It's a manual focus SLR Polaroid camera that lets you get really, really close. It's just completely unique. I love the design of it, and you can get amazing results from this camera. I've carried this camera on a number of different trips over the years. I've used it for just daily life as well, and I've really gotten to know the camera pretty well and how to get the best results out of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one, get to know the light meter. The light meter on this camera is right here next to the lens. You're not actually getting any kind of metering through the lens. So when you look through the viewfinder, you're not getting any kind of information from your light meter. It's not looking through the lens. It's just collecting light right here on front of the camera body. I think this is one thing that throws a lot of people off because maybe they're standing in the shade, but they're pointing the camera at something in direct sunlight and the camera isn't gonna know exactly what's in the frame. It just knows what kind of light is around the camera. Now you do have exposure compensation, which is definitely something you're gonna be using a lot with this camera. I always use it and we'll talk more about that here in a minute. But as you adjust the exposure compensation, it's basically like an ND filter for the meter itself. With an ND filter on a camera lens, you're cutting down the amount of light that's passing through the lens. and as as you adjust this, you can basically control how much light is passing through the meter. You're working with ISO 125 film with the SX70, and this camera has an f8 aperture, so you're obviously not working with a fast lens or fast film, and how much light passes through this meter right here, that's what's going to dictate the camera shutter speed. So even if your subject is in really harsh light, if the camera isn't, that's not really going to be the best way to meter for the scene. So that's something to keep in mind, and that ties into tip number two. Tip number two, get in close. The closer you are to your subject, the more likely your camera and the meter on the camera is gonna be in the same light source as your subject. And maybe if it's not in the same exact light source, maybe you're working with continuous light or there's something in really bright sunlight in a very specific spot, the camera itself is gonna be much closer and that light on your subject is gonna be reflecting back into the meter itself. The closer the light around the meter is to the actual light that's on your subject, you're gonna get more consistent exposures based on what's actually hitting your subject. Not only that, I encourage people to get close with this camera, not just for the metering, but because you can. That, I think, is one thing that really gives this camera an advantage and just gives it a different kind of look. Anytime you see a photo made with an SX70, it's pretty quick to realize that it was made with it because oftentimes people are getting closer than they could with any other instant camera. Most other Polaroid cameras, if you want to get close, you either have to use a close-up attachment or you just can't get that close at all, whereas with this camera, you can focus manually really, really close, and it's one of my absolute favorite reasons to shoot with this camera. So get in close, make sure the light around your camera is also matching the light on your subject. That's definitely gonna make a big difference. Tip number three, when in doubt, underexpose. I know this might seem odd, especially if you're used to shooting roll film and color negative film where people are always saying overexpose if you can because your highlights, they're not gonna blow out, but your shadow detail, that's just gonna be more improved. With this camera, it's a little bit different. Polaroid Originals film, in my opinion, doesn't look great when it's overexposed. You kind of get this yellowish tint to it, which for me personally, I've never liked it, but that's more of a personal preference thing. What I'm more concerned about is motion blur. Again, working with a really slow lens and a slow film, you're likely going to be working with a pretty slow shutter speed, and it's easy to get motion blur, especially when you don't really want that. From my personal experience and the thousands of photos I've made with this camera over the years, the most photos that didn't turn out weren't due to uh, underexposure and not being able to see anything. It was mostly due to camera shake. I think Polaroid Originals film handles shadow detail fairly well, unless it's something that's in a really contrasty situation. But for the most part, I think it handles shadow detail really well. And honestly, I would rather have a little bit of a darker photo that's sharp versus a well-exposed photo, but it's just a blurry mess and you can't see anything. So again, using the exposure compensation, I use this to my advantage. I'm pretty much always dialed in at least one or two stops over on the wheel to the underexposure side, just to make sure I don't get any of that unwanted camera shake. 
And I know I said I was gonna give you guys three tips, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a bonus one here. And this is the most important tip of all. Just shoot with the camera. Practice with this camera as much as you possibly can. I say this with just about any camera really, but especially this one. I think most film shooters, it's easy to get into the mindset of thinking, well, I don't wanna waste my film because you know, film is this precious thing and also it costs money, especially this camera and this film. Uh, the film itself is not cheap and you're only getting eight shots per pack. And this is a film that I think I see a lot of people where they're just thinking, oh, it's it's this precious thing and I don't want to waste it. I want to really save those shots. It's so easy to get into that mindset, but honestly, that makes it even easier to just prevent yourself from taking any photos at all. No matter what the camera is or the film stock, you have to practice with it to get better with it and to get more comfortable, and that's just going to lead to better photos. So I know it's, it's tough, especially financially, with just shooting a lot of this film, but honestly, if you're really in on instant film and you want to get better with it, those tips will help that I've just given you, but just using the camera and shooting with it as much as you can, that's going to help you better than any list of tips ever would. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you in terms of shooting with the SX70. If you're looking to pick one up, I obviously recommend it. I love this camera. But if you're looking for a place to pick one up, I would recommend Brooklyn Film Camera. Great people over there. I've been friends with them for years and they really know what they're doing when it comes to the SX70. These are not easy cameras to work on. So that's not just one of those things where anybody can pick one up and you know kind of tinker around with it and get it back to working condition. Brooklyn Film Camera, they really know what they're doing when it comes to working on these things. So anytime they're selling one it's always been inspected and refurbished and cleaned up it is in tip-top shape before it goes out the door they're not cheap but they're definitely cameras I would recommend especially if you want to take your instant film a little more serious this is definitely the option I think uh, there's plenty of different cool accessories as well um, sometimes they're a little hard to find and they again are a little more expensive nowadays um, I used to see people just practically giving these away I mean five or ten dollars at garage sales or thrift stores and uh, you know with the impossible project and uh, Polaroid Originals. The camera has definitely seen a new life since then and a new price to reflect that, but I still think it's a worthy investment. It's one of my all-time favorite cameras. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But before we wrap up, I want to pay some bills and tell you guys about our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. You can show off your work, sell your prints, or any other merch throughout your online store, and keep tabs on everything with the analytics on the back end. As photographers, our portfolios are always growing and improving, so updating your portfolio should be a simple process, and with Squarespace, it's incredibly easy to update or rearrange your portfolio at any time. Having your own online store built into your site makes it really convenient to update your inventory, add or remove certain items, run sales, anything you might want to do when running your own store. You have so many templates to choose from when designing your website, and they all look great and are easy to customize, but if you ever do need any help at all, Squarespace has 24-7 award-winning customer service. If you'd like to try Squarespace out, you can do so entirely free at squarespace.com, but when you're ready to get signed up, go to squarespace.com slash mattday and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So again, thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope you enjoy it. I'd love to hear your own tips or thoughts in the comments down below. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. We've got new videos every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But that's it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.